Hi team, welcome to 10 Talks, season two, Life with a View. We want you to have the opportunity to watch our conversations as well as listen to them. So here we go, real conversations for champions with champions. You can watch those interviews on YouTube at Life Training Academy. You can listen to them on Spotify at 10 Talks, or if you wanna get coached up for a 10 life and Life with a View, go to lifetrainingacademy.com. Welcome to 10 Talks, real conversations for champions with champions, where a champion life is a 10 life. Thank you for joining our team today. I'm Carlette Patterson, your head sports life coach at the Life Training Academy, and it's our desired outcome to share our passion for sports life coaching by training you to live a 10 life. You and your life matter. Let's get coached. Hi team, welcome to 10 Talks, real conversations with champions for champions. And today's champion is Camille. And who better to share really the introduction of who she is and what the power of her story is all about rather than Camille. So Camille, tell us about you. Uh, my name's Camille, I am currently a stay-at-home mom. I was a nurse for a handful of years. I worked in the ICU and transitioned as to being a stay-at-home mom. I have two kids. I follow my husband around, he plays professional baseball currently, and we just kind of try to live a 10 life every day. I love it. How old are the kids? Declan is two years old and Eloise is six months old. So team, here we go. We're on a journey to really discover how do you live that 10 life when you are trying to be great professionally, personally, and philanthropically. So welcome to our conversation with Camille. Welcome to 10 Talks. We are excited today to introduce you to one of our sports life coaches and a great friend of mine as well and just share with you her journey. So she is a wife, a mother, and just a, a three-dimensional woman, just really finding what is her life all about personally, professionally, and philanthropically. So Camille, welcome to 10 Thank Talks. You. Great to have you today. You're in town for spring training, which is exciting. Yes. And we just want to share really your journey in terms of tell us where you started, the power of your story. Tell us about kind of how you chose the career that you went into and then you had how you made the choices to make some stay at home mom choices. Yeah, so I um, actually went to school originally to become a doctor. So that was my intention. I loved everything healthcare, taking care of people. Um, and I ended up being a D1 soccer player in, at a junior college and decided doctor mm -hmm. school is just like not for me. So I went into nursing. Um, I loved it. It was really hard at first and ended up finding my passion in ICU nursing. I did that for a few years, um, traveled with my husband in Florida while he was injured and then decided we wanted to start a family. So I made the choice to leave nursing and stay home to have a kid and travel with him. We had been married, I think it was seven, or I'm sorry, we had been married three years at that point and had not lived together yet. Uh, um, welcome to the life of a pro athlete. So, so yeah, yeah, family, pro athlete family. Yep, so we decided I'd start traveling with him. We'd have a kid and just kind of see where things went. Um, we had our son in October of 2019 and it was, eye-opening to say the least. <laughs> yeah. um, Declan was a little bit of a tough baby and gave us a run for our money for sure. Yeah. Wanted to make sure what are you really a professional at here? Let's right. see if we can make a run for your money. Yeah. He tested us on a lot of different yeah. uh, grounds so we ended up deciding we're ready for a second and had Eloise in September of 2019. Um, I met Carlette <laughs> last summer, so the summer of 2019. It was difficult, being a stay-at-home mom was harder than I had ever thought it would be. Mm. Declan was great, we got out all the time, it was just me and him, but then as he got older, he got his voice and learned <laughs> to throw some tantrums. Um, and so learned to express himself. Yeah, yes. really wanted to be heard that yeah, that happens. It does. He had very yeah. big emotions yeah. that I didn't really know how to handle. Yeah. Um, and I was pregnant. And so I didn't know how to 
handle my pregnancy, while raising a toddler, while my husband's gone traveling. And I just felt like I didn't know who I was anymore through mm. this whole season. Um, so yeah, I met you and we started working on me and I, we figured out I, I just wasn't showing up for myself at that mm. point. I had no hope. I didn't know mm. who I was. So that was our first step together is you just kind of showed me how to show up in my own life again. Mm. I love you getting hope. I mean, that's a great component of our three dimensions and a great place to start. Yeah. So Camille, in terms of you finding hope and you really starting to think about who are you and what's important to you, take us through just how you even started that process because I'm sure we have people listening that are wondering too, you know, I had a career, I met my partner, I'm really excited about that. We chose for one of us to stay home and raise the children and it's a lot harder than what you thought. And how did you make sure that you really found you and started to, to live a life that meant a lot to you as well. I think our first step was I sat down and really thought about what my definition of significance was. Right. What did it mean for me to be who I was now and not who I used to be? Mm. Um, and giving up the identity of who I used to be was also a really big step. Um, it took me a long time to give up the fact that mm. I was a level one trauma ICU nurse that was really really important to me and then we had children and that identity faded and it mm. was really hurtful to see it go away while my oh. spouse continued to succeed in his career and move on with what he was doing while I had to grieve what I was mm. so I think just redefining who I was now was a really big step for me and admitting what I needed from my spouse as well to feel like I wanted to feel. So I took the time to write down what my definition of significance was and I shared that with my spouse and I shared my needs with him, my winning strategies with him that we went over as well. Um, and we just made sure we were on the same page with what I needed to get out of each day to continue being successful for our marriage, for myself, for my kids, for others. Um, that was our biggest step together. So oh, Camille, I really respect you talking about finding your identity. I think that happens to a lot of us, whether we're married to somebody and, and they choose to you know, take on the career and we have to give up our career and start a new career or whatever choice we make. Tell us about how you really honored who you were and also really transitioned into a change that was very different than anything you even thought it would be. I think my first step with it all was just remembering what I went through and knowing that I did accomplish something that was really big and I did have an identity prior to having kids mm -hmm. and that it's not that it's not a part of me now mm -hmm. it's just in the past a little bit mm. and that I can always go back to it I think that's what you reminded me of is mm. even though I'm not doing it right now that doesn't mean it's gone forever mm -hmm. and I just need to figure out what my priorities are and mm. taking care of our kids was the biggest one at that mm. point um, and just being with my husband I mean the lifestyle that we live with baseball he's gone so much and so if we didn't live with him so I could work our kids would never really see their dad yeah. so just figuring out like what was the biggest picture for us mm. and what was the most important was what helped me be okay with not doing nursing anymore and moving on to a mom role mm -hmm. um, but also just acknowledging that it is really hard to be a stay-at-home mom and it's hard to give up your career mm. so that your husband can do theirs and it's hard to sit at home with these kids all day <laughs> long and not lose your mind yeah. and just try to feel like you're still who you used to be mm. even for just a few times a week. So Camilla, as we talk about that, our tool for that is seasons and you really being able as a family to identify your season and, and your priorities, your desired outcome inside that season. And what a great process just for you and your husband to go through so that you can really be on purpose with all of your decisions. Did, did that kind of that anchor and that purpose help you not go crazy during you know all the times that just uh, the hard part about the mundaneness is what I remember as a stay-at-home mom is just like 
day in and day out exactly the same thing and wondering like uh, it's almost Groundhog Day every day and so right. yeah, you're doing the most important work we can possibly do raising our little ones and loving on them and and I just you know I really want to respect your choices that you and your partner chose chose to make and and for what purpose really being the kids so take us through as you started that and you made the decision making the decisions one thing and living through it is a whole nother season so what have you discovered about yourself in the process i've learned that i needed to work on my patience <laughs> and i needed to also make sure that i still showed up for mm. myself and provided a solid foundation for my son at the time um, we had a small ritual and routine it wasn't anything that he probably felt stable with um, mm. during that process. And I think you ended up showing me that, you know, small kids, toddlers, they thrive off rituals and routines and love ex knowing when to expect what's coming. Mm. Um, so I made, was really diligent with that after we discussed it. You know, we woke up pretty much at the same time, had breakfast, had a playtime, he did lunch, nap, and then an outdoor activity every day. So he knew pretty much his whole day what was gonna happen. But we also were flexible. It wasn't a rigid schedule. Mm -hmm. It was more of just a flexible routine for us. Mm -hmm. So every couple of days we'd get out of the house, go to the park or go to the grocery store. But we just made it fun. And I made sure I was a little bit better about scheduling activities mm -hmm. so that one, I didn't go crazy, but also he felt like he was getting what he needed out mm -hmm. of staying home with me. And so that was really important to us. And we also made sure that I was able to get out of the house and he could interact with somebody that was not me or my mm. husband. Um, being a stay at home mom, sometimes it's easy to just stay inside and do your normal stuff by yourself. But having my kid be with others and mm. play with somebody else was what was really important to us. Um, so we had a sitter come once a week and I could go do something to keep my sanity. Um, and that was what was a really big winning strategy for me and my husband and also for Declan. I mean, he did great having a sitter come over and I think he looked forward to having her watch him. I think she let him do things that I probably did not. <laughs> a lot more fun than you. Yes, yeah, so yeah. He, he ended up loving it and that's what worked for our family. Love it. And so let's talk about the performance barriers, the challenges that really got in the way. You had rituals and routines, you had these plans, you and your husband really, you know, came up with your desired outcomes, you're on purpose. Everything sounds really good and right and all that good stuff, but then life shows up and uh, you were pregnant as well. So yes. we added, you know, how you're feeling and how you're managing to all of that. So what performance barriers, when you watch your film and look back, what were the biggest ones that you had to overcome? probably losing my cool more than I thought I would. It's really easy to say that you're going to sit with your kid and help them count it out when they're really <laughs> frustrated and, you know, let them work through their emotions. But I was pregnant. I'm emotional too. Yeah. He got really big emotions and mine were just as big. <laughs> so learning to control my emotions when his got out of control was a really big performance barrier for me. Um, that's something I worked on a lot. You actually suggested the book Well Done. Yeah, love and that book. we implemented that and it worked wonders on mm -hmm. Declan. And so that was what helped us bring that performance barrier down a little bit for us. Yeah. Um, another one I think was just my anxiety overall. Mm -hmm. I just felt really anxious about how am I supposed to have another kid? We just mm -hmm. were struggling with the one right now and I'm pregnant. You can't I can't take it back. <laughs> we're in this. This is going to happen. Yeah, like yeah. she's got a due date. We're, yeah. we're in this right now. So, yeah. you know, I needed to figure out how to, how to one, manage myself while managing him so that we were on a good footing to bring another baby into this life with us. Mm -hmm. um, so just controlling my anxiety and my feelings and emotions, but also honoring them at the same mm -hmm. time because I, I didn't want to keep pushing them down like I was and just acknowledging that they were there mm -hmm. and letting them flow through me. Untethered Soul was yeah. a great book yeah. also that helped me through that one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, all of those just kind of kept playing parts in and I just kept working on it. And that's what I really hope that we can honor today is just that being a great person, being a great mom, being a great partner, it's a day, you know, day in and day out job. It's just like anything, we have to be intentional about doing the work with it. So what is your inspiration or motivation to really get up every day and, 
continue to push yourself into being better and you know being your best version of yourself I know that sometimes it can just get hard being at home and there's a time when we feel like maybe it doesn't really matter and we know it matters we know that our choices we make every day really create our life and so what is your inspiration and motivation for for how you just live your best life I think seeing how hard my husband works every day mm -hmm. is really important to me and having our kids see us working and striving to always better ourselves mm -hmm. is what motivates me too. I want my son and my daughter to see that if they really want something, they just need to work at it and give it their all and also understand, yes, you will fail and there'll be highs and there will be lows, but you just have to keep pushing through it, even through all the hard stuff. Um, that's really what I've been yeah focusing on um, even with grad school it's been really hard right now um, going through grad school and raising two kids at home by myself <laughs> well my husband's gone most of the day but every day I sit down there and it's just like oh my gosh in a couple years when I look up I don't want to wonder how far could I have gotten if I just kept going just one more day through this and just one more semester or one more class so I'm just trying to be really intentional of living each day and giving it my all every day that I wake up so I hear a winning strategy is setting a goal or a desired outcome and just knowing can I do a little bit every day to really make sure that I'm accomplishing what, what I determine is something I want in my life. So great job on that. I know how much work that is. So let's just talk about the seasons. When I met you, you had Declan and Danny was playing pro baseball and so um, you were really managing kind of what you wanted to do next. Take us through from that moment to kind of where we are today. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I always had the intention of going to grad school at some point in the future. Yeah. Um, but it just didn't seem feasible to me. I didn't know how I would have the time or can I do this? I'm having another baby. These kids need all this attention. And my husband really pushed me to mm -hmm. say, you know, if you want to do this, like we can figure this out. Whatever we have to do, we will figure it out. And so we sat down, we made a game plan and strategized on how we could do this and how I can be successful with it mm -hmm. and really just thought about what's my definition of success with it. Um, so we made our plan. I took your course, became certified sports life coach and ended up taking a client. I still have her. She's <laughs> wonderful. Um, but also realizing, you know, I, I do have more time than I thought I did. Yeah. And if it's really important to me, I will make the time and figure it out. And I think that was the biggest leap to get over in mm -hmm. your certification course really taught me if it's really important to me there is always time in my day for it and every time I think I can't do something <laughs> I just remember if it's a priority I will I will yeah. make the time for it um, so we made sure I had the time I got into the class and I'm in school now and it's really tough <laughs> <laughs> well I just want to take a little time out there because you graduated on your due date to when your baby you know your second baby was due so I that did. was very fun and Declan attended all of our classes our he classes did. are online um, we're all live but we're on zoom and Declan sat right beside you and he was our youngest <laughs> little guy to go through I think he was two right he was a year and a half a he turned half. two oh soon after gosh. I graduated yeah yes so a year and a half to have a little guy sitting there at night just uh, watching as we do our whole class and you pregnant Good. and us going through your pregnancy with you and yep. then graduation being the due date so was. that was a lot that you it went was. through. <laughs> All while my husband got traded, I had moved, it was very stressful um, but you know what having Declan there was actually really great for me because our nights it was in the evening so that night was always our time to just sit and watch a movie together mm. and at first I, I was just crushed I'm like oh my gosh this is during our like nighttime wind down I just adore sitting next to him and watching movies mm. every night like this is his sweet time yeah. for me yeah. and to be able to know I could still do that and do the class and mm. he had no idea he loved just sticking his face on the <laughs> on the zoom call anyways and just looking yeah. at everybody so that was that was nice for me to see that he mm. was still okay with me not being a hundred percent present with yeah. him but just sitting with him was still okay with him and that that comforted my soul a little bit yeah so team I hope that you're hearing just if you want something to go for it that's really important to make sure that if you have a dream or even just what are your dreams and what are your priorities and the things that you want to do and Camilla is doing a great job really taking us through 
how do we do this? How do we even determine what we want? How do we find our identity again while we're raising children? I mean, what a journey. So you graduated with us, you had your second baby, and uh, Danny did get traded in between all of that, yes. and you managed those performance barriers, and the action to change was just to figure out how to do it. So well done on your part. And then grad school. So take us through what you're thinking now. Um, I'm currently in grad school. It's all online, which is a huge winning strategy for me. Um, when I chose my university, I, that was a big priority for me. So I just show up, I think, a couple days throughout the whole program and run through some skill sets and do some checkoffs. But um, yeah, I just make time every day to just, okay, I have an hour, he's sleeping, she's sleeping. I have one hour to be as productive as absolutely possible. And I mm -hmm. shut my phone down, I make my coffee and just sit there and go through whatever I can in that short amount of time. And then when the kids are up, it's back in mom mode. Yeah. So, you know, I just make sure I'm diligent with my time and be as productive as I possibly can during that. And also just understand that I still need joy breaks. I still mm -hmm. need that time to be happy and enjoy life around me and not be so stressed out about the kids. That mm -hmm. was the hardest thing. My first course that I took was I was so consumed with getting everything done on time. I'm such a doer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was always trying and to a just high achiever. So yeah, definitely. bad combination. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good winning strategy. Oh gosh. So I was just, you know, constantly like I have to do the next thing and the next thing and get all this stuff done on time and I need it to be perfect. And I, I was hyper obsessing about how it was all turning out. And so my husband brought it to my attention that I need to just enjoy life a little bit more. So I've gotten a lot better about joy breaks and enjoying my kids and still spending time with them and still being a great mom, but also designating time for school, designating time for my husband and my marriage. Um, so it's just about finding that balance still and it's not perfect, but working on it every day. So let's talk about your marriage. That's another huge component to add to this life of significance. And so what did you find are really your winning strategies as Danny is figuring out his career and evolving through it and, and really maximizing and going for his dreams? You're on his support team and you are cheering him on day in and day out and he's on your support team. That's what I hear very, very um, intentionally is that he is there for you as well. So tell us how you and Danny figured that out we've just been together for so long. Mm. I mean, we've been together for 12 years now. Okay. Um, I, I think we've just been really diligent with how we progress through life together. Mm -hmm. um, from day one, we've always said we want to make sure we're always moving through life at the same pace mm. and not leaving one of the other behind. So as we've moved through our relationship, we just have always checked in with each other and made sure we're on the same page with life and where we want to go and what we want to do and what we need out of our marriage. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been really important to us. Our friends have seen us kind of go through high school together and college and, you know, a lot of relationships just they don't make it. It's yeah. really, really hard. And in sports, it's really difficult. Um, so we just make sure we ground each other every day. Mm -hmm. and. I don't let him get too caught up in baseball and he doesn't <laughs> let me get too caught up in school and being a mom. And, you know, I think that we've especially realized that a lot of the small stuff really is not that big of a deal anymore. Mm. And we just make sure that we're fully present for our kids and um, just being like a really solid team together is how we're kind of just getting through it all. Well, I love the team analogy because I know for us in sports, we're constantly about team. That's an easy word to use and it's a really, really hard word to actually make happen. So with you two as a team, how do you work through really expressing what you need and him expressing what he needs and you guys finding really how to manage that? We seem to be able to tell that the other one's not doing so well yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and I think just acknowledging it to the other person and just saying, hey, it seems as if something's off do you mm. want to talk about it um, for him a lot of times it's either something with baseball or how he's feeling about something or just not feeling prepared or he's questioning you know especially spring training it's so stressful right now for him um, just what the, our future is going to look like and so we just make sure we're always having that open line of communication between each other what are you feeling what do you need from me mm. you know and sometimes we just need a break from 
talking about it yeah. and so giving him joy breaks too because yeah. he needs breaks from that and just honoring what he needs and he honors what I need and we just make sure we work through it together. Well, communication is a huge winning strategy, but knowing how to do it is really hard. So you've expressed, you know, somewhat of how to attempt that. So when it's not going well, certainly pro baseball is a really tough career. And um, I would say all careers are really stressful. And the thing about being a pro athlete is you don't have a lot of control over it. That like in a moment's notice, your life can change. and. So what have you found that you and Danny are really intentional about to honor just the, the vulnerability of being in the career that you've chosen? We are intentional about realizing we have no control in this and just being okay with that. Um, when you first start out in this sport, I had a really hard time. Well, where are you going? When will you know this stuff? When can I come see you? When should I book my flights? Are you gonna have a night off? Can we go to dinner? What's breakfast look like? I had so many questions every day mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to plan our month in advance. Yeah. And so I've learned that you just have to let go of it all and realize mm -hmm. everything does change within a day. Um, here we are sitting and yes. <laughs> spring training has been suspended. Yeah. So um, yeah, just kind of rolling with the punches at this point. We've gotten really good about realizing we've gone through so much and everything has always been okay. Mm -hmm. It's always worked out he's gotten injured a few times we've moved lord knows how many times <laughs> yeah. we've hired moving companies at the drop of a hat you know yeah. we can do anything that we need if we really need to do it um, and just being okay with that I mm. mean freaking out and getting anxious about the situation really doesn't solve any mm. any problems for us so we've learned to just say this sucks yeah. but the you truth, know right? yeah the this truth. sucks yeah. our truth is it sucks yeah. we have to move again you got traded I'm still pregnant whatever yeah. it is you know it sucks but like it's not anything that a few phone calls and just mm -hmm. going to work can not fix yeah so that's what we've just realized over the last few mm -hmm. years <laughs> well you've gotten that that chance to practice <laughs> practice practice yes, lots, lots has of happened. Practice. yeah <laughs> so let's talk about anxiety that's one thing that so many of us all really have to manage and you talk about being able to control the uncontrollables and just know that I, you know, certain things I can control and certain things I can't. You talk about where you started in terms of wanting to have everything kind of a certain way. What do you want to share about relationships in terms of really letting go of that? What does it feel like and how do you do it? And what does, what happens once you can step into just the present? I, for me personally, it's kind of stepping out of the situation mm. and looking at it from the balcony and just what's, what are the facts in this situation right now? What do I know? And is there really anything that I can do? And sometimes the answer is there isn't anything I can do. This is just a really tough situation or I'm just really needing to process through these feelings so I can move on from whatever is going on. Um, and just honoring that and being okay with it. And walking away so that I can have a few minutes has been really big for me. Even mm -hmm. just uh, last week, my parents were in town and I don't know why, I just had this overwhelming feeling of anxiety hit me. And it was the kids are crying, my parents are here, Danny's trying to make a team, people are getting sick left and right. What am I supposed to do? When are we leaving here? And it just felt like so much emotion coming at me. Mm -hmm. but the reality was I can't do anything about it. And so I just stepped outside, you know, no phone, no social media, no distractions. And I just stepped outside and sat out and just mm -hmm. took a few breaths. Yeah. And Danny came outside and asked if I needed anything. And I said, I don't. And he just <laughs> sat with me in silence together yeah. and it all passed. So mm -hmm. I've learned to just remove myself from the situation, do whatever I need to do and realize that sometimes there really is nothing I can do. Hmm. Well, as we're having these champion conversations for champions with champions, which is what we really are committed to doing, what is it that you want to tell really our champion audience, the, the moms that are thinking about staying home, the moms that are committed to staying home, the wives of professional athletes? I mean, you know, you really are somebody that represents a lot of different um, areas and seasons of life. And so what would be your words of wisdom? that you want to share based on everything you've gone through? Uh, I've learned to just not take social media so seriously. Okay. I think right now, especially 
social media has become a huge point of anxiety for a lot of people trying to live up to expectations of this is what a stay-at-home mom should look like or should do or this is what a professional athlete's wife should look like or should do or should be um, all of that's really heavy to weigh on you when you see people's highlight reels every day and just realizing that that is their highlight and it's not the reality normally mm. um, and my reality can look vastly different than everybody else's and that's really okay yeah. um, it's also a lot easier for me to sit here after nine years in the game <laughs> and say yeah. all these things yeah. you know as a early baseball wife or girlfriend it's hard to not start comparing yourselves to others or why is my husband not being called up over other guys building really solid friendships through this life is what's been gotten has is what has gotten me through baseball and making sure that I have those girlfriends to fall back on and we're all in this together all of us are fighting for jobs together we're all just trying to support our husbands so just making sure you have a solid friend foundation is what's been the most important to me uh, so Camille thank you very much for just the opportunity to hear your story and thank you for every day just getting up and being inspired to go out and be your very best and just if you were thinking about where you were 12 years ago when you were a girlfriend of a pro player what would you want to tell those newbies that are starting out and just um, you know, share your heart from that perspective make good friends okay. and support your man mm. because this is so hard for him to go through without having your criticism on top of it and your insecurities overshadowing how he's feeling in the moment mm. um, you're allowed to be insecure you're allowed to question how this is going but you also need to understand this is his career as well and so being supportive of him but just having that open communication of what both of you need in this process whether that's you traveling with him or you staying at home. Um, that's a really big important decision that I'm finding is pretty common in this life. Mm -hmm. um, and we never had that talk. I just, mm. I stayed home and he traveled. Um, so that seems to be a big discussion among the current relationships that I'm seeing in baseball. So I highly encourage girls to have that conversation about what each of you needs. Mm -hmm. Some of you need to be together to make it work and some of you need to be apart to make this work. So just finding what each of you needs in the process and also making sure you both have a solid support system. Camille, you talk about the insecurities of just being in a new relationship. So how, what are the winning strategies or how do you manage? It's easy to say that in terms of make sure that, you know, we keep our insecurities to ourselves. We're certainly going to have them and we honor them, but how'd you do that? I don't even know. Gosh, it's been so long. Yeah. You've survived it, right? Oh so, my gosh. Yeah. It's been so long. Um, I think honestly, just telling him what I'm feeling mm -hmm. and why I'm feeling that way and we both try to come to an agreement together and realize you know this is our life this is his career this is our relationship to work through um, and at the end of the day where we're going is what's most important and mm -hmm. making sure we did it together was what we really wanted to achieve out of him being in baseball me working as well um, so just like you said honoring insecurities but also realizing that if this is what we really want, we just need to stick together and move through this phase as a team. Camille, those are great winning strategies to sign off on is that if you really want something, you can totally achieve it. And sticking together as a team is a huge winning strategy. So thank you very much. And team, I just hope that you get to hear just the power of team and the power of having a desired outcome and sharing it, really communicating with your partner what you want and having the courage to honor each one of you. Remember, you and your life matter, and to us, that's what makes a champion, is just somebody that really figures out what is their definition of success professionally, what's their definition of significance personally, and how they want to give hope and serve other people philanthropically. So you have heard this from Camille, a really 3D woman, and we have loved every minute of it. So it's your turn. Go out and make yourself a 10 life, and we look forward to talking to you again. Welcome to 10 Talks. Thank you for listening. We'd like to get you coached up, so head over to iTunes and Spotify and hit subscribe. And remember, a champion life is a 10 life. 
You and your life matter. Create a life that you love. Give hope to others and be and choose nothing but tens. Be you. The world needs you. Go to lifetrainingacademy.com to start your training and get coached.